to go? Do you want me to turn it on? Yes, please. Recording in progress. It's on. Okay, thank you. Uh, welcome to the regular meeting of the Midcoast Community Council for October 12th, 2022. Uh, Dan, would you please call the roll? Sure. Um, Claire? Yes. Greg? Here. Um, Michelle? Here. Len? Len? To see you? Um, I thought I heard a scroll to see if he's on the video. Len, are you here? Did you say everyone was here earlier? I did say that, but I might be wrong. Okay, Len's not here. Okay, um, and you are. Jill. Jill's here. Dave. Thought I heard you. Dave. Yes. Okay, and I'm here, so we're all here except for Len. So there's okay. six of us present. Thank you. Uh, before we actually start the meeting, I'd like to take a moment to remember Harold Herman. Okay, uh, just to let everybody know, we have three more meetings this year. One more in October, one in November, right after the election, and one in December where we... Um, say goodbye to the departing members and swear in new members and elect new officers. So Len is here, so we're all here. Uh, I'd like to start with the Board of Supervisors report, please, Lena. Yes, thank you so much. So the first thing I want to address just very briefly is the regional housing need allocation, which was brought up uh, last week, and there were some questions. And it's a kind of complicated thing that we could go into in a special and its own agenda item in the future if you so choose, or I can just speak with whoever's interested privately. But a really quick overview is that the California Department of Housing and Community Development determines the amount of housing need for the Bay Area as a whole. And then those Bay Area counties go, come together and um, basically allocate through with it by county and city um, number the housing need by jurisdiction. And that's also divided by income level um, from very low income to above moderate income. Um, so I will include a link in the chat after I finish my update to the report. Um, but one specific question was how is that done for the unincorporated area? And for, Sam and for the unincorporated area, basically we get one number or four numbers between the very low to above moderate income with one total of, arena, of numbers uh, for the unincorporated area. And that's just a very overly simple overview of, of that. And then, um, so there was a couple questions about Cypress Point. I know we're gonna go into much more detail on that later, but um, the proposed Cypress Point project, uh, according to the website, has 71 units, uh, which it was originally zoned for 148 um, back in the 80s. And it is proposed to be, besides, I think, the um, whoever's going to be maintaining the property, 100% affordable housing, 75% either living or working on the coast. And I couldn't find this written down, but what Supervisor Hors Horsley told Greg and I earlier this week was 49% for farm workers. Um, but that's just something that Supervisor Horsley told me anecdotally, and I wasn't able to find that in the documentation with the time I had. Um, but I will include a link to that page too with more information on that. And then I want to let y'all know that next Tuesday, um, October 18th at 10.30 a.m. during the regular board meeting will be the informational briefing on proposals for a minimum wage in unincorporated San Mateo County. Um, that is an item that is coming forth by Supervisor Horsley and Supervisor Pine. And actually, um, Supervisor Horsley's interest first started on the coast side because he met with farm workers at Alas and farm workers at Puente, and they um, imparted to him that one of their highest priorities was higher wages. We, we talked with a man who had worked at the same farm for 
over two decades and was still making below $15 an hour. Um, so we'll be bringing those proposals forth. I don't want to take too much time for that, but if anyone has questions, I've been working on this item personally, so I'd be more than happy to talk about it in more detail. And we're looking forward to getting feedback from the community at the board meeting. Um, and then also, uh, I had been told that I was going to get an update on the Midcoast Park and Recreation Development fee. Um, I have not received that just yet. Uh, I will let y'all know as soon as I get it. Uh, the plan that was imparted to me is that the, the planning building department is going to be going to the board of supervisors um, with the report that they are supposed to do annually. Um, and also I believe that the parks department will be um, kind of providing the, the past few years that may have been, uh, we may have missed since 2020, I believe, um, of reports. Uh, but I just haven't gotten that information just yet. And then Lastly, there is a new sheriff's captain on the co-side, Captain Albin. Um, and so I just want to offer, uh, if y'all would like, I can, I'm more than happy to facilitate an introduction. And that is all my updates, and I'd be happy to take some questions. Other questions for uh, Lena? Uh, start with Dan, please. Yeah, thank you, Lena, for your report. <clears throat> so I have a question. Um, we've heard, in fact, somebody came to the MCC basically kind of telling us that, hey, the state is mandating this number of housing all the way across the state. Um, the question is, uh, can, you, uh, can you let us know or do, do you know, um, you know, what, what kind of, you know, where does this calculus come out of? What, how do they come up with these numbers? Um, you know, I, I know that historically certain cities have really pushed back. Um, and, uh, you know, really, yeah. how does this whole calculus come up? Do you hear about people moving away from California all the time? Um, mm -hmm. Although the freeways are still full. <laughs> um, but truthfully, how does this calculate? Where, where <clears throat> do we know that, do, do you know where the, you know, the, the calculations and the data and all this, what is the real pressure coming down? Right, yeah. right. Truly, I think I've sat through four presentations on arena numbers and it, it hasn't totally sunk in just yet. Um, so I don't know if I'm equipped to fully answer it, but if it's something the MCC is interested in, and now I'm hearing multiple members of the MCC be interested in it, um, we absolutely could get someone who is an expert in this to come and do a presentation and answer that question because it's a good question. Lena, I think we should probably put it on our list of potential agenda items. And I'd be more than happy to help with that. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sid? Uh, today's planning commission meeting, they went over all the RENA numbers and they, they, they approved it, but there's still a 30 day comment period. Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I read on the site's inventory versus the arena, I think there was um, 3,566 units. So um, those are sites. I don't know if those will all be built because uh, as Lisa Ketchum pointed out um, to the other commissioners, some of them were along the uh, closed portion of Ocean Boulevard on the west or the ocean side, which is falling into the ocean. And I noticed the um, sorry, I'm, uh, wellness center did, wasn't listed and they're going to have 70 units. So I don't understand. I mean, maybe they were just figuring out these units from their desk in Redwood city and didn't really, you know, fully, um, analyze it, but there's a 30 day comment period and the link is on the, um, Planning Commission website. Um, the other thing is, um, Dan asked, how do they come up with it? There's a, a statewide housing shortage, as you probably have heard, and they just want to get behind the curve because they haven't been creating enough housing over the years. So that's why the last eight years they you know, gave out an allocation number, nobody met the targets. So they're just, they almost doubled it. So, you know, I guess they're expecting more jobs and more people. Um, also, Lena, on the mitigation fee, I uh -huh. believe at the last meeting for the parks, uh, Midcoast Parks mitigation fee, that they're supposed to be assessing to every uh, residential 
construction or remodel. Um, it hasn't been, the fee itself has not been updated since 2016. I believe Dave Olson said 2020, but I went through the MCC website and all I could find was the letter from Steve Monowitz saying they increased the fee in 2016. So we're way behind the curve on reassessing all the you know, contractors or whoever, property owners that are building houses. And, you know, we still don't have a community center okay. or an evacuation place. Thank you. I, I appreciate you. that. And, and you had asked the question about raising the fee last week. And so that is incorporated in my questions for the planning department that I'm waiting to hear back from. Okay. Uh, Jill, you have a question for Lena? Thank you, Lena, for bringing all that information to us. Um, it is well, it's now for Sid, I think, or Lena. The number quoted 3560 units is that the number, Lena, that you spoke of for the unincorporated area? So, I'm the number that I had was a, around that. I, maybe what I have is out of date. I, I found an, uh, an old document from middle of this year and it said. 2,833 for the unincorporated area was the projected RENA number. Um, but I don't know if we're just talking about two different things. She might be talking about what is planned building um, or what our county's planning. I'm not sure. No. I'll, I'll, I'll share the document with you and you can see what I'm looking at. All I know is um, I believe this thing where sites in this inventory. Uh, can, can, we, can we take turns here? I think Jill has the floor. Yeah. She, Jill asked, see, she said, I might know, so Jill, that's why I butted in. Okay. I think if we can put this on the agenda and get some real facts, that would be the best thing to do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. We'll move on, I guess. Thank you for Lena. I think we'll move on to Harvey thank from you. Half Moon Bay. Um, I've sat in on a few of the uh, ABAG meetings. That's the uh, Association of Bay Area Government. They're the ones who created the RENA numbers, and they do an analysis of population, jobs, uh, primarily those two things go into this magic formula that they come up with. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's somewhat arbitrary, but it is done on a regional basis. That's what the R in RENA comes from. Uh, I only have one update that is relevant to the mid coast. And that is, if you read the review today, you know that the county has been very generous in giving us two and a half million dollars for a economic advancement center, uh, which will be built very soon. And the, uh, the center will be for small businesses, it will be for job seekers. There will be courses there to, to train people in uh, skills that uh, are needed to get jobs. Uh, there'll be a, a small business incubator as part of it. Uh, it's really going to be a very exciting thing. And as its name implies, it's although it's going to be located in Half Moon Bay, it will be designed for uh, the entire coast side. Uh, small businesses and job seekers. So we're very excited about that. And we're looking for a, a suitable location. Um, I visited the uh, Economic Opportunity Center in South San Francisco, and it's a pretty vibrant place with lots going on. So it's, it's going to be a real plus for the coast side. Uh, that's the only uh, uh, update I have, but I'll be glad to answer any questions about Half Moon Bay. Uh, Greg. Harvey, um, is there yet a staff report on the funding for this project? Uh, yeah, uh, at the last council meeting, we uh, accepted the uh, funding for an additional uh, grant from the uh, Chan Zuckerberg initiative to actually do an analysis of how well this uh, center will perform. Um, I, I'm pretty sure the staff report has the funding in it. Um, the idea is that the two and a half million dollars is meant for a two year project. And at the end of that time, somebody, the city, county has to come up with uh, more funds 
the, to keep the center going. But if it's successful, I believe it will get the money. Okay. Good. Uh, Kimberly, you have a question for Harvey? Yes, thank you, Claire. Um, Harvey, at the last um, city council meeting, I had asked a question about, five, I think it's 555 Kelly, the, yeah. the new development. And, yeah. and, you know, that was very awkward. <laughs> um, I, I feel, I, I, as a community member, I definitely support that project, but I'm still waiting to understand, um, you know, if the height of the building is intended to be a precedent that will be set for future other construction. And nobody's answered that question yet. So if that's mentioned somewhere in writing, maybe you could point me to that policy or thinking, but I'd still like to know the answer to that question. Thank you. Um, I can't give you a definitive answer, but I'll give you my guess is that there'll be a variance on the, uh, the height of the building because uh, up to now, we've only allowed three-story buildings, uh, but I don't think anyone wants us to set a precedent. It, the reason that the uh, proposal is for four stories is because it's on a small lot, and if you're going to put in 40 units of uh, extremely low uh, affordable housing, as well as the uh, community center, uh, the ALAS, you just have to build up. And given that uh, constraint, uh, I am personally in support of having this be slightly higher than the uh, current the highest buildings in, in the city, but I don't think it's gonna be a precedent. Okay, I, I guess my worry is because I've seen this happen in other communities is that there's a variance. And then later down the road when that council is no longer there, Another council says, oh, we have this building, so let's move forward on, on this other building. And then you've got two buildings, and then before you know it, it's a whole community of taller buildings. So I guess maybe some thought should be put into how to make sure that that it does just stay at that one building. Um, I don't know. Just It's, it's just a, a weird concern of mine, but thank you. Sure. Thank you. Dan, you have a question for Harvey. Yeah, I, I echo the concerns of Kimberly. And um, I want to ask uh, Harvey, has, you know, um, this building will, you know, eventually shade the, uh, the church. Um, historically, churches are, um, you know, the prominent uh, building on in the neighborhood. And now this is... Uh, has there been discussion um, that you've heard, you know, concerns about uh, putting shade on, you know, uh, um, the church? Uh, I haven't heard about anything, but, you know, this is the preliminary stage to a preliminary stage is what it amounts to. And before anything uh, is going to be approved, there's going to have to be all the environmental concerns that need to be addressed in it, all the CEQA uh, documents. So uh, I'm sure it will come out um, as a potential uh, 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 environmental has uh, issue, but uh, I haven't heard anything about it. But like I said, this is uh, preliminary to a preliminary study. So far from uh, anything uh, happening. Okay, I'll do my best to continue to follow. Thank you, Harvey. Sure, Dan. Thank you, Harvey, for your report. Are there any other government officials here tonight that want to speak? If not, we'll move on to public comment. Uh, pe pu members of the public can speak for up to three minutes on anything not on the regular agenda. And what is on the agenda tonight are the, is the local road safety program, uh, purchase of real estate by mid pen uh, open space, um, final MCC comments on Cypress Point and the MCC autumn newsletter. So anything other than those, if somebody has something they would like to say, please raise your hand. Sid? 
Um, they also at the planning commission today denied or um, yeah, would, did not support the uh, visual messaging signs on the mid coast, yay. And um, I think they also uh, had to postpone the Tanitas Creek Beach project because there the documentation came in so late, posted to the website that none of the commissioners was able to really absorb it. But it's kind of moving forward. It's just, you know, got delayed. I think that's all. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I'll, I'll close public comment and uh, move on to the consent agenda. I would like to pull some items from consent. Oh, we're not, okay, let, let me say what's on, on it first. Um, we have the minutes for uh, September 14th and 28th, recognition of Filipino American His Heritage Month and a resolution to continue remote meetings. Um, go ahead. I'd like to pull the minutes for September 14th for some minor corrections. Okay. And the August 14th minutes were not available. Do I have a, a motion to approve the consent agenda without uh, the minutes for September Sorry. 14th? I will, move, I will move to uh, approve the remaining items on the consent agenda. Second. Uh, can, we, can we clear about so you're approving the 28th, but not the 14th? No. Yes. Right, got it. <clears throat> Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Dan, could you please call the roll? Okay, I'm sorry. There was some breaking up. Um, uh, Dave moved. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And uh, Len second? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. Okay, so uh, Claire? Yes. Greg? Yes. Michelle? Yes. I'm yes. Jill? Yes. Dave? Yes. Len? Yes. Okay, so it's 7-0. <laughs> Passive. Thank you. Okay, moving into the regular agenda. Uh, the first item is on the local road safety program, which is um, a program um, involving the county public works department. And Qua Vo is here to explain the program to us. So uh, welcome, Qua. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I have to apologize, but my traffic engineer, Harry Yip, is scheduled to be here to present this item. I don't think he's here yet since our item is scheduled for 740. He's the project manager. He's been leading this effort, so he's very familiar with that. Um, I, so I, could fill a, I could fill a small gap in time here. Or we could move to uh, the, the second item. Um, well, how are you going to fill it, Greg? I wanted to announce that I've uh, been working with Qua and the communities to uh, prepare workshops, and we've agreed on dates for the El Granada sidewalk issues. Um, we have that scheduled for, and these are both Zoom workshops, 1 p.m. on Monday, August 31st. And for the Farallon School Safety Signage in Montera, we have uh, November 1st, Tuesday at 1.30. <clears throat> um, I will just mention my thought is that we're going to use the MCC Zoom account unless somebody uh, has an objection to that. <clears throat> and I do have some question about the scope of publicity and announcement, um, but I'm proposing the following. Um, I'll write up some kind of a description. I'll pass it by mm -hmm. Qua and the community. The community members will distribute it you know, themselves. I'll post uh, a link to the two meetings on the MCC webpage as agenda posts. And I will keep the date of that post freshened so that while intervening meetings may eventually come in front of it, once those meetings are done, these meetings will pop to the front again. 
I'll also work with Michelle Dragady at Coastside Buzz to get articles on the buzz. I'll post it in next door. I'll send notices to the Half Moon Bay Review. And then my question is, and I'm looking at you, Michelle, uh, we have emails we send out to, I'll call them subscribers to the MCC. I presume that would be two different emails. I don't know if we differentiate between El Gridon and Half Moon and uh, uh, Montero. All right, so that's... Did you mean August 31st? He meant October. Um, we don't have the October um, we don't have um, our email newsletter database uh, segmented by location, so I think we would just consolidate with a single email to the entire list. Okay, got it. I took that note. Okay, okay so, so that's my update, and I'm guessing that's enough time for the traffic engineer to show up. Yep, Harry is here. Harry's here. Maureen has her hand up. Was that to ask a question of Greg, Maureen? I, I just want to say that we should have some further discussion on outreach later, not now, but later, especially after we hear the substance of the topic. We may want we may want more ask for more outreach. Uh, there's several topics that we're talking about at the moment, but but, but yeah, we can follow up on all of that later. I do, I do think that that um, Kwa, that your person has arrived. Yes, uh, let me introduce our traffic engineer, Harry Yip. He is the project manager for the LRSP uh, plan and study. Um, Harry, why don't you go ahead and get started and introduce the LRSP to everyone, please. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my name is Harry Yip. I'm the traffic engineer who's working on this uh, local road safety plan for the unincorporated roads of um, San Mateo County. Let me get the slideshow started. Everybody see? Yes. Okay. So a um, little background, um, what is a local road safety plan? Well, a few years ago, the FHWA, the Federal Highway um, Administration, started this program to help local agencies um, better define and identify and fix, you know, high risk areas in their roadway networks. So they came up with this local road safety plan as a tool to help um, local agencies to better allocate their funds to um, help their roads. And that, that went through the state, Caltrans, and they provided us with a nice grant to prepare this um, plan. Um, so in, in, in general, the plan, calls for the local agencies to identify stakeholders. Um, they use, um, we, we gather our safety data, collision data, and then also choose um, proven solutions based off of what our findings are of that data, and then implement those solutions um, with uh, based on the data and the uh, recommended solutions. So these are the, the main goals of the plan is to reduce traffic related fatalities to zero by 2035. And this is, you know, the general goal provided uh, in the guidance from the state and uh, uh, the federal highway administration. Um, we also want to reduce severe injuries. So the, by 50% by 2035, which is uh, kind of on the same time frame. And we also want to improve safety for all roadway users which means not just motorists, but bicyclists, pedestrians, scooter riders, anybody who's using the road. A um, little bit about who we worked with in developing this plan. Uh, we work with the California Highway Patrol, Caltrans, uh, our Office of Sustainability, Planning and Building, our um, Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Committee. We had a, an aid from a, a Supervisor Pine's office, we also had the Department of Public Health. Um, so this is about how the data we use to analyze uh, in this plan. We use the collision data collected by law, law enforcement um, from 2014 through 2020. Um, it does have some limitations as we also wanted to capture anything that's 
not reported to law enforcement using like hospital data, but hospital data did not have location of those collisions. There are also no good um, data sources for near misses. Um, so what do we do with this data? Well, we, we looked at the collision data and we tried to identify the top um, locations where we need to address the most. Um, we looked at intersections of the 15th mo top 15 most injury collisions, and we also um, separated it, signalized and unsignalized. Um, for road segments, we also looked, we looked at the top 20 using um, injury collisions, um, but we gave more weight to severe injury and fatal collisions, and we also gave more weight to those that involved pedestrian, bicyclists, or any other active mode collisions. Um, so after all that coaching, this is kind of the result we get is this map with, um, you see on the roads on the left side, it's mostly um, some red bars and gray bars. Um, the brighter the red bar, the more, you know, the more severe that um, roadway segment is. And the little um, black dots are individual collisions recorded. Um, we, we did not include the individual collisions for the state route because they're just too many and it would just um, flood the screen. But, you know, as you can see, Highway 1 does come out as a, um, a major concern for the Mid-Coast region. And then if you see on the top right, there's a little window that um, for Miramar too. Um, so we selected, based on that data, we, we can tell what the type of collisions they have. So we could identify, match those up with countermeasures that are um, published in the Caltrans Local Road Safety Manual and match those each segment of intersections based on collision types and the, the modes, whether it was bicyclists or pedestrian or motor vehicles. So this is kind of the matrix we would get. We would pair uh, on the left side is are one of the on our top uh, roadways. So this this list is truncated to to fit the slide, but there are more for the um, there, should, there should be a twenty all together. But on the top, there's um, all our countermeasures that are recommended based off of the collision profile we see for each of those roads. Um, so, for example, Higgins Canyon Road, we we identified we may need to install some more curb warning signs, some uh, edge lines and center lines. Um, this is the slide for intersections and unsignalized. So I've highlighted the ones that are in the mid coast region and all of them do are at the state route uh, intersections. So those are mainly um, maintained and operated by Caltrans um, so any improvements would always have to go through them, but I still wanted to identify them on this plan. So Cyprus and State Route 1, um, you know, this just gives a all the things that can be possibly done, not necessarily the thing that should be done, but I'm just going to list all the possible things that could be done. Um, do you have a question, Dave? Yes, but let's hold off till you're done. Sorry. Okay, um, so this, and then we also see State Route and Medial and um, State Route 1 and Virginia Road. And then the next, we also see State Route 1 and um, Cavistrano Avenue as a priority roadway uh, intersection. So what comes next? Next is um, implementation. Um, some improvements are already underway. Um, Middlefield Road in, in North Fair Oaks is already seeing some improvements. Santa Cruz Avenue in West Menlo is also. And um, we're going to develop projects from this list as funding avail is available and some countermeasures may be implemented as part of maintenance projects. Um, so what's the next steps? Well, we are going to present this um, draft to the public right now and also go for board adoption in 2023. 
And we also will uh, reevaluate the plan at minimum every five years with new data and evaluation of implemented countermeasures. Um, yep, and that's all I had. Yep. I'm free to answer any questions. Harry, can you give some examples of what are considered countermeasures? Um, so yeah, the countermeasures here listed on top, for example, st uh, stay route one, um, one countermeasure is to convert to always stop, but no, that's, that's hard. It's a lot of volume. Um, we can do a signal or a roundabout. I know that's already in the connect the co-site plan. Um, I don't, I didn't see anything that we would um, contradict with the co connect the co site plan. Um, yeah, so these are all different countermeasures that were suggested by the state and are proven by research to improve safety. Uh, do I just go down the line with Dave or? Here, how do you want to do it? Sorry, I can't really hear you that well. Uh, okay, I was uh, waiting to see what Claire wanted to do. Okay. Um, but since I'm not hearing anything from Claire, um, the issue I wanted to raise, you sort of addressed by the ongoing study and roundabouts. It's really important to the council or, or the majority of us on the council. <laughs> that uh, we not see specific things like stop signs listed, but instead see that a nice study be performed um, since a number of us would like to see roundabouts rather than stop signs or signals. Um, yeah, this is not a plan to, you know, give specific, this is the one thing that would fix everything, but this is just to give an engineer a plan in the future to start how to develop a a plan and then um, hopefully consult with the council on how best to implement these countermeasures. Right. It's just a state of mind thing that checking off stop signs is a possibility without listing an ICE study. Um, you know, not everybody follows this and they just look at the summary. So mm -hmm. um, just a request to not list it that way. Okay. Thank you. I guess Michelle is next. Yeah, I wanted to ask um, if you're working at all together with um, planning. I know um, last, late last year, the MCC wrote a letter of support for the Moss Beach um, State Route 1 corridor study, um, I think being run by Shonda Singh. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask, you know, are you in contact yeah, she is the representative from the planning and building on our uh, team, and she is reviewing like all our drafts as we okay. go along. Do you happen to have any update on on that study specifically, and where? Because it, I, I, my understanding is that it was supposed to explore the possibility of signalized intersections or roundabouts for this corridor, including both Cypress Avenue and Virginia. Here. I spoke with Chanda yesterday and the other project manager for Caltrans today about that. <clears throat> so I'll give an update at the end of the meeting. Well, since it's relevant to this, I don't know, Claire can decide, but I'd love to hear about that now. I was on mute, which is a problem. Um, yeah. I I think the council's got some some important things to say right now, and I think we'll I'll go to the to the to the community after uh, we finish this brief discussion with the council. Len, do you, can you bring us up to date a little bit on that? Sure. Um, <clears throat> basically, the we, we refer to it as a Moss Beach corridor study, but basically, uh, they selected the consultant and began to meet with them in late sep uh, September. Uh, they expect to be able to come to the public probably within a month or so with update on what they're doing. But basically, they have a primary responsibility to look at the three major intersections in um, on SR1 in Moss Beach, Virginia, Cyprus, and down at Carlos and 16th. Um, so we, we should expect that coming forward. Relative to the overall picture, 
we refer to an ICE plan, for example, that's something that would not be initiated until after this study is done and the approximate length for this study is about a year. So we should expect sometime next October or November that they bring their work to a conclusion and then go to a next step. Len, for clarification, can you uh, spell or identify what ICE is for? for Intersection ICE? Control Evaluation. It's a Caltrans process. <clears throat> so anytime uh, someone comes forward to put in controls, either a signal, a stoplight, stop sign, or an intersection on their roads, it has to go through an evaluation to look at all the alternatives. Thank you. So I guess my follow-up question then to um, to Kwan's team would be, considering that's in process now, would any changes to the intersections in Moss Beach be like on hold until that process is complete, or how do you how do you stack those and work work together with that team? We would have to work together with the Caltrain study, um, no matter what schedule we have because it's in Caltrans jurisdiction, all will have to be deferred to Caltrans as the lead agency uh, and the decision maker. Um, so I, I think whatever projects that can be identified uh, or improvements, we would have to work with Caltrans um, schedule on that project. Okay, thank you. So in other words, the uh, counties. Uh, planning that you just presented to us is actually uh, Caltrans uh, jurisdiction, all of it? No, no. Most of those are the local roads and the local roads are within the county's jurisdictions. These are for unincorporated areas um, in the areas where we don't have jurisdictions, which is calling them out as an informational item. And when possible, we'll work with that agency, in this case, Caltrans to see what can be done uh, similar to what is transpiring now with the study that um, uh, Chanda from Planning and Building is working with Caltrans on. Okay, so it's a coordinated a coordinated project right. because everything that's in the mid coast is under Caltrans jurisdiction. It sounds like along Highway One, yes, only Highway One and ninety two. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Greg. Well, I don't want to emotionally hijack this, but you know, with Harold Herman's death on uh, Highway One in Moss Beach a couple of weeks ago, we're a little raw out here. And I remember back about a year ago, uh, approximately, I remember driving up Highway One in that same stretch on Moss Beach and seeing a car upside down that had been crushed and slid across a couple of lanes. And that stopped traffic for a while. There probably was another incident too. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but I had to drive up Carlos Street to get to Montero because Highway One was blocked. So in recent memory, which might be two years or so, that's at least three severe uh, incidents. So my question, and it may not be fair to ask you this uh, at this time, maybe it's more of a question for Len or later discussion, but what are we waiting for in terms of better control on the stretch in Moss Beach, which, you know, has had some pretty ghastly collisions and accidents in the last three years. Um, who's Who owns that problem? That would be entirely within Caltrans because okay. that's Caltrans right of way, Caltrans responsibility. And, um, uh, and, and I believe Caltrans is very aware of the incident that occur, the fatal incident that occur. Um, and and th that was discussed with them last week. And so, Len, is the Moss Beach Corridor study going to be our hope for solution here? Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's a long-range process to get through the construction process of changes at those intersections. Uh, Caltrans does not move rapidly on that, so they do require us to go through all the steps. So if you're at, I asked, you know, if, if you're thinking about when you might see an intersection change at a place like California, it could be anywhere from three to five years out. 
Now, as far as the speed limits and things like that, that relates to the overall strategy of the road, and that, but that's a whole different topic as well, but it also requires changes in the roadway to be put in place. Dan. Sorry, I got to turn my phone off. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, so I have a... Uh, I'm going to go try to go through this really quickly. Um, clearly, there's a... Uh, there's um, reason to spend money. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, tax dollar uh, money going into this, obviously. Um, I think the community wants the best dollar spent. Um, I, I, I'm not sure why this is separated from other studies. Um, there's been a lot of other studies. Uh, I've got concerns with uh, striping on, on Higgins Canyon Road. Is that going to lead into Stage Road? There's a lot of uh, very low uh, used roads in our county that, uh, you know, I, I, you know uh, that are really um, uh, um, cherished by people who like to get out and feel like they're in the country. And so some of these ideas that you're talking about will dramatically just just destroy that that country road feel. Uh, of course, I am 100% uh, supportive of, of of general safety, but you know I question the calculus and all this. And where where does the money? You know what what, what are the priority? How do you go, come up with the priorities? Um, I want to say overall, I think that uh, this whole concept of safety uh, and the roads is extremely complicated. Um, and, and I'm, you know, I, I've heard you say that you had a group of people that come together and then they made these decisions and recommendations. But um, I think that the community should be uh, a much bigger part of this. And uh, before, uh, and part of that should be that the community should be really educated. There's, there's been so many changes um, in the past 10 years or, or, or maybe even more. Um, you know, uh, so many now, so many more drivers now using, um, map apps to, to understand where they are, where they're going. Um, you know, I see it all the time. So somebody stopped, you know, stop in the road, make it look like they're making a right turn and then they make a U-turn and, and this, you know, they're looking at the map. They're not looking, they, they don't know where they are. Um, underpasses, uh, which is obviously a, a safety, uh, uh, asset. Um, you can't get hit by a car if you're crossing the road and uh, under the under the road at a grade separation. Um, education. Uh, I, I don't hear anything about um, you know educating the public about all these new <laughs> hazards that have come up in the last ten years. Um, specifically, all the different. Um, rate of travel it used to be that you know uh you have a worry about a horse rate of speed and a pedestrian rate of speed then the automobile comes around you got the, the different rate of speed today we've got um electric skateboards electric bikes slow bicycles pedestrians uh cars it's um it's extremely complicated today and i i think it's time that uh government um, really kind of educates the people about uh, it's, it's far more broad than what's come up tonight. Um, the other thing about the kind of wrap it up. Then? Flow, okay. I will. Thank you. Um, thank you. As, as far, as far as the, uh, uh, the dominant flow of highway one, um, uh, roundabouts versus, uh, signal, uh, properly programmed signals. I think that, uh, it's the duty of the government to provide the community with uh, Vism software, which give which would give an example of how would the how would the highway work with a roundabout versus how would the highway work um, with uh, properly programmed signals. Um, uh, thank you, Claire, and that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
Claude, Claude did mention to me that you are interested in getting a letter from the MCC commenting on, on your plans. Uh, is that correct? Correct. Yes. Okay. So I, don't, I was hoping we could do a quick letter that we could put on consent next next meeting, but it sounds like we may want to uh, be slightly more detailed. So this is not the last time we're going to hear about this. We'll probably do something with it at the next meeting as well. Um, Kimberly, you had something you wanted to add. Yes, thank you, Claire. Um, thank you for the presentation. That's really helpful. Um, two, two things. Um, this community has been asking for lowered speed limits for a long time with multiple projects. And I think that's low hanging fruit that we continue to ask for. Um, the second thing is um, the, the data that you have, I'm curious to know if you were able to parse that out into how many collisions are a result of DWI, um, driving while impaired. Uh, that would be interesting information to know. Thank you. Yeah, DWI does come up in some places of the county, but it did not for this portion. It was, what we saw in the day was mostly in North Fair Oaks and Pescadero area. Mm. Sid, so, you have something to add? Yeah, um, I guess this is for um, Yip, Mr. Yip. Um, you said that the, I didn't write it down, so um, this didn't, this isn't year to date. It's from like a couple years ago, right? This, right. What, what were the years again? 2014 through 2020. Okay. Um, I guess it's not your fault, but a lot of us are really frustrated because I know I've been attending meetings since 2012, which was the Highway 1 Safety and Mobility Study. And <clears throat> there just haven't, We've had nothing but meetings and plans and studies. There haven't been any except the illy, uh, ill advised crosswalk in Moss Beach that was rather controversial. Um, there hasn't been any road improvements um, that I can think of. So I'm very disappointed to hear that there's another um, study that's going to take a year with lofty goals, but no funding. As far as I, I didn't hear you say that there's funding to implement anything, right? Except over on the other side of the hill, maybe uh, Middlefield Road and something in uh, Menlo Park, right? Well, so this plan is going to be a requirement for a lot of state funding in the future. So without it, we can't really um, apply for grants anymore in the future. Same with um, like the the build build back better um, funding. A lot of that requires such a safety plan as well. I see. Well, I mean, I don't know as far as general safety. We don't have an evacuation plan for the whole mid coast yet. You know, in case of a very big emergency when everybody, including visitors, have got to get out of Dodge quick. So um, I'm just, you know. Also, I wanted to ask you the one slide that you showed with Cyprus. Um, we a long time have been asking for a roundabout there, but that box wasn't checked. It said signal or something else. And that that's the intersection where the fatality happened about two weeks ago. So um, could you make sure that box gets All checked right. before yeah. you send it on? Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. No problem. It was supposed to be funded by a developer that was developing something on Airport Street. And then in 2017, the county let the guy have a pass. And so nothing's funded, nothing's been fixed. I've lived here since 1988, and that's the intersection I have to come and go out of. And I believe the level of service is F. So a roundabout would really help to um, keep traffic moving in every single direction of that intersection and be safer for pedestrians and cyclists. Too. Thank you. Thank oh, you. you know what? I have a question for Quack, and I ask it now, Claire. You've still got a few a few seconds left. Okay. Um, maybe he'll. I don't know if you're staying for the uh, Cypress Point project, but um, I don't. I saw on uh, the MCC website a drainage. Um, inventory and most of the drainage on the coast side is ditches is my is my understanding and somebody recently posted on next door that they went out 
um, I think it was near Lancaster and Carlos Street and clean their own um, ditch because it flooded heavily in uh, December of last year, so much so Cal Fire had to block off the roadway there. And I just wondered, do you guys go around and check all these so-called storm ditches and places where you know water can build up quickly in a extreme storm we do we actually have have our staff monitor and drive and inspect all the inlets during the storm events how about before <laughs> and, <laughs> that and would help absolutely, we absolutely do that okay. the problem the problem with the drainage system in that area is that it ultimately ties into the caltrans system and Caltrans system, there, there are two locations where they will not go in there to do any maintenance because it has, um, I, I, wanted, I, I believe they say it's, it's either the frogs, red-legged frogs, um, or the snakes. Um, I'm not sure which, which species it was. I think it was the frogs, uh, where the cattails are near the sheriff's substation, right? Yeah. So... Yeah. The, the the systems tie into that inlet there. And as you can see, that inlet is probably three feet buried under all that debris and muck and vegetation there. So there's nowhere for water to flow through. We've talked to Caltrans as part of their improvement projects. Unfortunately, their project that included drainage improvements and south of that uh, location. So I've reached out to their project manager, but they cannot expand their scope to include uh, that that problem area. Um, well, but that's that's the enough. one person I store posted their uh, pictures, and it actually came down Sunshine Valley Road in Lancaster, where and it ended up flooding in Moss Beach. So I just wanted to know if you were looking into fixing the storm. I mean, clearing out any blockages before the rainy season. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Michelle, you had something. Yeah. Um, previously, I asked about, you know, the intersections in Moss Beach that are along Highway 1, but I saw on the map that, you know, the part of the area of concern um, on in Moss Beach along Cypress Avenue kind of extended down Cypress toward Airport Road. And I was just wondering if you know, because obviously things on Highway 1 take a long time and you have to work with Caltrans, but what about that stretch of Cypress? Um, do you have any specific recommendations for improvements that can be done there? I know it's very narrow. There's a bridge. People, almost, It's very hard for two cars to even pass at the same time. And if there is a pedestrian or a cyclist, you know, it becomes harder. Is that part of the issue that you've identified or just, you know, what else can you tell us about that area of Cypress? Unfortunately, it didn't come up as a high priority area, so I didn't spend too much time on that. Um, it was in the, I'm talking about, it was in the top, the lower 50% of the yeah. high priority area. Are you saying you only did the top 50%? The top 25, really. Only the top 25. Oh, okay. But we can look at it. I can look at it and see what yeah. we can add to that. Yeah, I'd be interested to see. The, the, the situation with Cypress is, is right-of-way impact. No mm. matter what you do it there, you're going to need right-of-way to build that road out to provide the width to accommodate traffic and pedestrian and bicyclists and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't see that as, as a feasibility. Um, I don't think it's feasible because not many property owners are willing to uh, look at granting the county right of way to to develop that area. Um, the other thing is, if, even if that was possible, now you're looking at a speeding concern because the wider the road, the higher the speed is going to happen in that in that area. So we have to look at a number of different issues to try to address all of them. Uh, if Cypress was to be uh, up there in the 25 percent. Okay, and then one last question. I noticed um, Airport Road had two incidents on there. I believe those were both fatalities that occurred within the last few years, one cyclist fatality and then a car um, accident. There may have been another cyclist fatality prior to that, but that area wasn't highlighted as an area of concern. What can you say about Airport? Yeah, I'm not sure why it didn't show up in that maybe it's how the segments of the road is divided but i'll take a closer look at that okay i'd appreciate that mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Well, thank you to both of you. Um, I think you can hear the degree of frustration that, that we're expressing and the timing of this is difficult as well. Uh, but we appreciate your coming and telling us what you are doing. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to the next item, which is the presentation by the Mid Peninsula Regional Open Space District. Is, is Ariel here? Uh, good evening. Um, actually, my name is Mike Williams, and I'm the presenter this evening. Ariel had scheduled this, so um, just to clear up that little bit of confusion, uh, I'm going to share my screen if that's okay. Sure, go ahead. Is that coming up on everyone's screen? No. Okay. If you're dual screen, sometimes there's problems with that. There you go. All right, and I'll get it changed into the appropriate mode. All right. Uh, good evening, council members. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Michael Williams. I'm the real property manager for Mid Peninsula Regional Open Space District, or Mid Pen. I'm here to do an informational uh, presentation on Mid Pen's proposed purchase from Peninsula Open Space Trust of the 6,300 acre Cloverdale Ranch Uplands property located at the southern boundary of the town of Pescadero. Um, this first slide, this picture, is from the scenic overlook on the um, Wilbur's Watch Trail, which is located at the south end of the Cloverdale property. And you can see in the background, it overlooks Pigeon Point Lighthouse. Cloverdale, um, as I mentioned, is at the southern end of the town of Pescadero. Uh, and actually, Stage Road dead ends uh, into the Cloverdale property. Um, and it is bounded by public roads. As you can see, uh, Pescadero Road um, to the north, Cloverdale Road to the east, Gazos Creek, and Gazos Creek Road to the south, and then um, Highway 1 and uh, Bean Hollow Road uh, to the west. In between 1997 and 2012, Post um, purchased um, four properties totaling over 8,000 acres, um, which make up um, the original Cloverdale Ranch property. And then about 900 acres uh, in 2000 was transferred at, to be a part of Butno State Park. And then uh, several years later, uh, the Pigeon Point Lighthouse property was acquired and, and transferred to state parks as well. Um, Cloverdale is also surrounded by over 33,000 acres of protected uh, park and open space lands, um, including to the east, Butno State Park and Big Basin is to the east and the south, and to the south, Anya Nuevo, um, Bean Hollow State Beach, um, and uh, um, other beaches uh, such as Pigeon Point are to the west. And then the Pescadero Marsh is to the north. So reasons for the purchase, um, to preserve open space, habitat, watershed, and rangeland, and to create the Cloverdale Open Space Preserve, which would be a new preserve. And um, just for comparison, the district's Sec second largest preserve is our La Honda Preserve um, next to the town of La Honda. So uh, Cloverdale would equal the district's second lar lar largest preserve. Also to protect habitat, um, it has one of the largest, healthiest San Francisco garter snake habitats and red-legged frog. 
and also both Butino Creek um, on the northern part of the uh, property and Gazos Creek to the south uh, provide for steelhead trout habitat. Um, as part of the purchase, we would continue the livestock grazing on about 2,500 acres of the rangeland under grazing leases subject to a rangeland management plan. Uh, and then partner with Post to protect the adjoining farm properties for future private ownership subject to agricultural conservation easements. And I have a map that'll show that in a minute. And then, of course, management of the existing Wilbur's Watch Trail, which is a scenic overlook of 1.1 miles. Uh, and we are developing an interim public access plan for docent and permit hiking until future public trail planning is developed. Uh, and that would be a separate um, public uh, trail process. And so once again, this is the Cloverdale property. And the yellow portions of the property represent the 6,300 acre uplands properties, uh, starting along Pescadero Road at the top of your screen is one of the farms. There's a farm stand there. It's R and R Fresh Farms. Uh, then there's two two more farms here that are with Fifth Crow. And then uh, Root Down Farm farms on post property on this property. And then there's another private farmer who up until the last couple of years has farmed this property. It's been fallow for about two years. So the goal is for post to retain those properties, sell them to the farmers subject to agricultural conservation easements. This is a view looking to the northwest towards the Butino watershed and in the center of the screen, I, hopefully you can kind of make out, there's kind of um, a portion of the town of Pescadero. And then this is looking kind of the opposite direction to the southwest towards Año Nuevo. And then um, this is the up, upper Bean Hollow reservoirs, which provide agricultural irrigation to local farmers uh, along the western front of the Cloverdale property. And these are private farms. The proposed purchase terms, um, Post is selling the 6,300 acres for 16 million, which represents a 50% bargain sale as this property has uh, an approximate $32 million value. Um, Midpin will use um, almost $10 million of state and county grant funds to purchase the property. And then the balance of the purchase, which is a little over 6 million, we would use voter approved measure AA bond funds. As part of the purchase I mentioned earlier, Post will assign their grazing leases um, and tenants um, to the district, and we will continue uh, conservation grazing on about 2,500 acres of the grassland, um, primarily on the east side of the property, um, on, the, on the Cloverdale Road side. And then Post will retain approximately 400 acres of irrigated and dry farm land for future sale to farmers subject to agricultural conservation easements. Under Midpen's ownership, Midpen will patrol and manage the existing Wilbur's Watch Trail. And as I mentioned, develop an interim public access plan until, until public trails are developed through a future public process. With that, I open it up to any questions council members may have. Uh, thank you. I'll ask for comments from the community first and then go to the council. Does the sure. community have anything to say that they want to ask or comment on, uh, Sid? I do have one question. You mentioned measure, I think it was measure double A, and I thought that was for um, the inner bay. Um, it was like a 20 year assessment to improve the bay lands. Is that a different, am I thinking of different measure? That, yeah, that was a different bond measure. Um, <laughs> our, our measure AA bond was approved in 2014. 
and it was uh, a three hundred million dollar bond over thirty years. And it was through MROSD. That's correct. Okay, thank you, Maureen. Yes, uh, just a minute here. Yes, I'm a little bit confused that I I always think of host as peninsula open space, but now I see your organization is mid peninsula. So are you a totally separate organization from post? Because I noticed that your website shows openspace.org. And why I'm asking these questions is I have found out through my own personal property in El Granada that a lot of this open space property that gets acquired, that at some point it comes back to the state to rebuy it and that the state has to come up with the financing for not only acquiring it, but maintaining it. In other words, the use of more dollars to acquire more open space. So to summarize, I'm trying to understand the structure on this. Thank you. Sure, um, I, it's a really good question and it's a common question that comes up. I'll uh, let you know who we are, and then I'll let you know who Peninsula Open Space Trust is. So um, mid Penn or Mid-Peninsula Regional Open Space District was uh, formed by kind of a grassroots voter initiative in 1972 in uh, Northern Santa Clara County, and then in 1974 in Southern San Mateo County, and we also extend into Santa Cruz County, and that was approved. And so we're a public agency. We're a special district, uh, an open space district in three counties. And actually, uh, MidPen formed Peninsula Open Space Trust, which is a 501c3 nonprofit land trust in the late 70s. And so what we're a public agency, we, re we receive property tax funding, we apply for state grants. MidPen is a nonprofit that solicits private donations um, along the peninsula. Their boundaries expand well beyond the district's boundaries. They've been involved in uh, some of the GGNRA additions in your uh, area over the last 20 years. Um, they also were involved in um, the Coyote Valley in San Jose. And so they extend into the full county of Santa Clara, San Mateo, and more fully into Santa Cruz County. Um, so we're partners. Uh, they're a private agency that does uh, very successful private funding. Um, and we coordinate our efforts uh, on projects. Um, at the time, Post bought this uh, property back in the late 90s and early 2000s. I think the goal was that this would be transferred to state parks. State parks was only willing to take the property that was east of Cloverdale Road and adjacent to Butno State Park. And then, of course, uh, Pigeon Point, they were willing to take that property. And so Post has been holding on to this property for some 20 years. And it was identified as one of our uh, 25 top projects in our uh, 2014 uh, successful bond measure, which you asked about. So I, I hope that um, gives a good description of, of uh, Mid Peninsula Open Space as a public agency. And Peninsula Open Space Trust is a, a private nonprofit, which is a land trust. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, I think that that is always a little confusing, so that helps some. Uh, I think I would just uh, go around the council and call on each person for any comments you would want to make. You don't need to put your hands up for this. Uh, let's start with Michelle. Yeah, thank you so much for coming tonight and thanks Maureen for that question and, and for that very um, helpful answer, Mike. Um, no, I think this is great. I'm in full, fully in support of it. Um, and I don't have any specific questions right now. Thank you. Greg? Well, I support it, but I seem to be having cognitive dissonance. Maybe I'm the only person here that is. 
Um, so let me get to that last and just ask a couple of simple questions first. First, I would love to see the funding analysis that you guys put together. I assume there's some document you've produced that explains the flows of funds. Are you talking about our measure A uh, funding? I'm talking about how you're funding this purchase. You mentioned a whole bunch of things, including eventually selling land back to farmers. Is that all documented in a spreadsheet somewhere? Uh, I, you know, I, I can I can certainly provide a write up. Um, what what I um, I don't I think I neglected to mention that there. I think I did mention there's close to ten million dollars in grants that were yeah. obtained. There was an $8 million specific grant um, that was uh, approved um, in um, a year ago in the state budget for the Cloverdale purchase uh, by mid Penn. There was a Prop 68 grant of about a million, one million point four three, which is called the Recreational Improvement um well mike mike let me interrupt you i sure. i don't mean to burden the council with the, the details of this answer oh, sure i'd just like you to send me the analysis okay uh, okay se second question should be easy and the third one might not be the second question is what do you want from the mcc i'm in support of this oh this is purely informational um just to let the whole coast side know i i, I uh, went to city of half moon bay last week and we're, we're engaging the Pescadero community, so it's, it's informational. Okay, and my last, the cognitive dissonance is, we just heard earlier in this meeting about a whole bunch of regional housing needs assessment goals. How are you guys able to buy this land and presumably take it off the market for, for construction of more housing? I, I, I'm sort of shocked to see the state supporting this program. At the same time, it's pushing us in the middle of the worst droughts since the Middle Ages to build more housing, I, I I'm I don't understand. Well, maybe maybe uh, I should have given a distinction between Mid Peninsula Housing and Mid Peninsula Open Space District. We are protecting the property for public open space and parkland, um, for protecting the natural resources, uh, continue the agricultural uses on the property, and in the future provide low intensity public recreation. So it's yeah. not for housing. Right, it's not, and and I'm just shocked that the state is backing your program. At the same time, it's pushing for more housing. I, I don't understand that, but uh, thanks. Okay, Jill, do you have any comments? Uh, yes, actually, I do. Um, thank you for coming and giving this presentation. I have been uh, on Cloverdale Branch. And I have to tell you, it's one of the most beautiful properties in San Mateo County, and it is covered in snakes. So I was uh, excited because I saw San Francisco garter snake and Santa Cruz aquatic garter snake and coastal garter snake. And I think it's a wonderful idea for you to purchase it and preserve it. And thank you for doing that. Lynn. Um, <clears throat> I've been involved with Green Patils for many years before I even came here, who was involved in the creation of this organization. I think it's great. Um, not troubled with the dissonance that Greg describes. Maybe I can talk with him offline. And uh, that's all I have to say. Uh, Dan. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, I believe I met you at the 50th uh, anniversary there in, uh, by Johnston House. Um, uh, if it was you, I think so. Anyway, it's great to meet you. Um, certainly support all that you're doing and um, this purchase. Um, I, uh, I wanted to uh, give you a uh, kudos for uh, how you're handling uh, the regrowth of eucalyptus at Rancho San Antonio. Uh, walked, I go there a lot and uh, it's, it's right there and it's a beautiful uh, <clears throat> example of how we can um, <clears throat> control uh, uh, invasive growth without uh, chemicals. <clears throat> um, can I ask, since you're here, um, can you, uh, would you mind, would you be able to say something briefly about the, uh, the push towards the, the wildlife underpass on highway 17 that I believe is going on and, uh, and, you know, possibly what, what kind of drove it because, you know, we have a lot of wildlife 
here I've, I've studied this uh, a lot. I know that, you know, that, uh, you know, we, we always see raccoons um, uh, on the road and, and deer and everything. And that, you know, uh, maybe you could uh, bless us with some information, education, briefly, very briefly, please, um, on, on how and why this is so important and, and how it can help um drivers you know uh it's, it's not just the poor animal that might get killed on the road but but the drivers that are using the road can also get um uh injured uh sure dan i i we did meet at the 50th anniversary um highway 17 i'm, I'm probably not the uh right person to answer, but I, I can give you an answer. And, and also, if uh, the council is interested, um, we could have staff do a presentation on that project. So Highway 17 above Los Gatos is uh, in our jur jurisdictional boundaries. It is um, for, in particular, mountain lion species, it, it has one of the largest kill rates um, in, in the area, and, and it's from automobile accidents. And in that same, so this is one of the key projects that was identified as part of our Measure AA bond. And so we are working with Caltrans on an underpass for wildlife um, to reduce uh, the amount of accidents that happen in that area. Uh, and this is just um, at Lexington Reservoir above the old Cat's Restaurant. And we're also working on an overpass uh, for the Bay Area Ridge Trail, uh, since uh, that is also kind of a dividing factor for segments of the Ridge Trail on both sides of the property. And um, I'm happy to, if the council would like to, uh, our natural resource staff could do a short presentation on that project. Um, Peninsula Open Space Trust has been involved in a wildlife corridor project that is similar um, in Coyote Valley. And uh, this would connect um, the coastal range um, with um, the Diablo range and the Gabion range for mountain lion habitat. And that's about the best I can do. Thank you very much. I would support that. And uh, it's my understanding that uh, uh, wildlife generally uh, tends to use uh, even underpasses for that are designed for humans. Uh, they just, they just kind of uh, path of least resistance, they figure it out and then it's a natural thing. And so thank you. Uh, Dave. Yeah, um, I unsurprisingly also support this. Um, I volunteer for Post. I've supported Post financially for many years. Um, I've been on the Cliberty Alliance property, um, so um, fully support it. Um, also had help from Post and the Open Space District when we were working on the Ohlone Portola Trail, which hopefully would run through that property someday, uh, subject to some of the wildlife and other uh, geological issues there. Uh, so yeah, all for it. Um, and uh, to answer Greg, if you Google California 30x30, that's 30 by 30, you'll see a lot of it about why it is important to the state of California. Thanks. Okay. Mike, thank you very much for coming and talking with us. And I wrote down uh, your possible uh, agenda item as, as something to look at in the future. So thank you for, for, for doing what you're doing. And thank you for your good questions. Thank you, Mike. The, the next agenda item is something we've been working on for the last two meetings, and hopefully we'll finish it up tonight. Uh, this is the MCC comment letter on the application for Cypress Point. Uh, the letter has been posted with the agenda for the last few days. I sincerely hope that everybody's had a chance to take a look at it. Uh, Dave, would you be willing to present this? Uh, yeah, I'm not going to present the letter since I hope everybody has looked at it or has it on their screens. Uh, um, I I will say that similar to what we showed last meeting, we added another paragraph about hazardous material analysis, 
Um, we strengthened some of the um, emergency evacuation uh, issues that were not completely clear um, and tweaked a bit of wording here and there. Um, so it's not significantly different than the previous version. Um, and we also uh, added a bit more about uh, stormwater and concern about um, the more major storms and that that be taken into account in sizing the retention basins and storm drain for this property. Uh, Before we actually start um, discussing the letter, uh, can I get a motion to approve the letter? So we have that on the, on the floor. I will so move. Is there a second? Okay. Thank you, Len. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll turn it first to the community. Any comments on the letter that uh, you would care to make? Please raise your hands. Sid. Thank you. I might need more than three minutes, though. Uh, uh, we're going to keep it for three minutes. Well, um, uh, I guess I'll just send my draft in myself then, but I think I'll, I'll limit it to that you need to um, strike the part about the um, emergency access from Lincoln Street. That's for fire equipment only. Lincoln is a very narrow dead end street with a steep drop off into the canyon. I know because I sold the last house on that block. It's a one way, I mean, a, a one lane street. It's not through traffic. Um, and it needs to be made explicit in the plans and the traffic study. Some pages of the plan show a driveway extension towards Lincoln at the Northeast portion of the property. However, the other plan drawings show that access is covered with large rocks for construction entrance, but it's really for fire engines to come in. So if you read through the whole thing, I think given its importance, emergency egress should be mentioned explicitly for this project. So I would like you to reevaluate that part of the letter. And also, um, there, uh, can I address that part first? Well, before if you you're going to take up part of my two minutes, no. Well, it's not for your two minutes. It's just to answer that section before you All go. right, let me go on to, and you can finish it at the end. It's your letter. Um, the other thing is, I, I there was somewhere in here, and I can't find where right now, but you mentioned, somebody mentioned putting the Coastside Fire Protection District on the Midpen property. Well, they've already had their meeting and showed three different um, um, diagrams of what, what they're going to do on the existing um, Coastside Fire Protection District um, Moss Beach um, fire station, and they're going to tear down that station and rebuild it to orient it's better for um, the those things. So I don't think the mid coast council should try to get in there and try to rearrange both the mid pen project and the fire board project. You just need to strike that portion of the letter. The other part, it's very long and it has to do with the drainage. And I went and looked up the uh, storm drain inventory. And even though everything in this project keeps referring to storm drains, there aren't any storm drains on that portion of Carlos Street. All there are are ditches. So um, I'm very concerned about the area of biological, I mean, yeah, biological significance at, that Montero Creek flows into because that's, I think, from Mont uh, 7th Street all the way down to Princeton Harbor is all part of the um, Fitzgerald Marine Reserve. I have it written up. I'll send it off to you guys um, so that you can include it. But um, I really think that they are misstating or misinformed about the storm drains, which don't exist. I went down there right after the recent rain and I could see where the side of the road had some water that flowed across Carlos Street and down towards Highway 1. So there really aren't any storm drains. The, first, the closest one is on the south portion of, near um, Sierra and Carlos Street. So that would not benefit the, that um, particular um, <clears throat> project. Um, okay. 
Uh, I'm going to stop you there. Yeah, that's um, fine. I'll put the rest into not, chat. Not, not just for Sid, but for everyone. Uh, please feel free. I would encourage everyone to write your own letters to the Planning Commission as well to emphasize things that you feel maybe uh, could use some more emphasis. I would also note, Chris, I mean, uh, Sid, that in the first uh, part of what you said tonight, uh, the letter says explicitly what you said you wanted to, you wanted to have said. So you might want to take another look at that. I don't know. Maybe I got my pages mixed up because I printed out both letters and I thought it was still listed in both letters. The other thing so, I did want to mention is that um, Carlos Street is very narrow where the residential section is. And I think they should either post no parking zone signs along there or make it um, only for residents and not allow the, it to be part of the Cypress Point come and go back down to Moss Beach because it's going to be very disadvantageous to all the residents on that street because it's so narrow. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. Uh, I would, Claire, thank would you mind to uh, let people know the deadline of that uh, for uh, personal comments from the community? Would you would you mind to let the community know? No, go ahead. Right. There is no deadline. Pardon? What? Pardon? What is the deadline? No deadline yet. Um, so, okay, thank you. So, to comment on Sid's comments, indeed, we said exact. We did exactly what you were talking about, Sid. We had in the previous draft. We'd mentioned the confusion about the emergency vehicle access to Lincoln, and it's bi-directional access. It's in and out for emergency vehicles, and asked that they make it even clearer in the plans and the surrounding documents. And we added explicit language about evacuation for the residents from the property. Um, as far as the storm drains go, there is a brand new storm drain system as part of this project. There are they're paying three, for? Let me finish, Sid. Oh, I'm just three, asking. Let me finish. Please. Oh, yeah. I'm not allowed to interrupt you, but you've interrupted me the last three meetings. I, Go ahead. I let, I let you finish this talk. All right. And now it's my turn. There is a brand new storm rain system. There are three bioretention basins on the property to be built at the lower end of the property, closest to Highway 1. There are drains feeding into that from various parts of the property. And from those bioretention ponds down to Montera Creek. Those are the ones we're asking to be, have the calculations redone in light of the really heavy storms we've been seeing. So it's not gonna go into the ditch on Carlos, it's going into a new storm drain. Which, which we are asking them to reassess. Yes. And as far as, as far as Carlos Avenue, we also have language in the letter saying that something needs to be done to make Carlos Avenue safer for pedestrians and bicycles, given how narrow it is. Carlos Street. Carlos yes. Street, thank you. Yeah. JQ, please go ahead. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay, um, I had a, a few comments about the letter. Um, the one thing that, that Sid mentioned about the uh, the Moss Beach Fire Station, that paragraph, I agree, that, that really just doesn't fit. And I, I would respectfully request that you just take out the whole paragraph. Also on the, on the paragraph right before that, where we talk about, um, it says the retail and human need resources of downtown Moss Beach are not as robust as the application indicates. <laughs> I think you should add a little more there uh, with regard to the fact that local residents, which would include these new residents, would have, have to travel to Hatton Bay or Pacifica for food services and amenities, because that's one of the things that the application, they kind of alluded to that in the application, or at least it seemed misleading. They were trying to refer to the fact that Moss Beach is where all the residents of this development could go shopping, and it's really just not there. The services aren't there. So they have to have a car. So I think your points about other transit options are good, but I think that point about the fact that they, they have to have a car or something else is important to mention for that site. Um, also further down at the end of the page two, um, you talk about the use of fill 
And I, it's not clear to me from the application. I think there's going to be cut and fill. That was my understanding. And so I think that should be added to, to specify how much cut, how much fill. Uh, at the very least, they're obviously going to be hauling out all the concrete from those foundations. That's got to be a tremendous number of truckloads all by itself. And if those uh, those foundations are all contaminated with asbestos, which I believe they are, they may not be able to take that stuff to a regular landfill. And I think it's important to, to delineate that too in, in any kind of a study or an EIR. And we may even want to request that up front. Um, so I think you also want to ask for a confirmation of the number of truck loads again, or the number of truck trips that will be required for both cut and fill, or if they're only, you know, whatever it is they're planning to do. Um, the paragraph after that on page three talks about the evidence of asbestos um, at the site. And uh, I think you need a little bit more there because those geotechnical studies were very limited. Um, there was actually anomalous, anomalous levels of lead at two testing sites in that limited geotechnical study they did. Um, and I think there should be more there about the requirement for additional extensive testing at the site for heavy metals, for asbestos, for organic chemicals. And this should be done in collaboration with the appropriate state agencies because this, this was a former military site. And I think that needs to be part of an environmental impact study that's coming up. And I, and I, I think that you should say that up front, that an environmental impact report should be have a lot stronger testing for hazard, hazardous materials here. So um, I think that's all the comments I have for now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, JQ. Um, I thought I saw another hand up. It's Dolores, go ahead, please. Uh, uh, yes, sorry. Um, I'm just really confused about these comments and the timing and the planning commission. I haven't seen, I mean, this this application isn't complete. It doesn't have the whatever environmental study that they're going to do, and they don't have the biological resources. So why are we even talking about the planning commission yet? Because my impression so far is that this is just to help them finalize, you know, cover everything that's needed. But um, the other thing is uh, there's no schedule of anything on this. And so uh, you say other people should send in letters. My experience has been with the planning commission that they don't get anything until it's up, up for them to be viewed. So I'm not sure what the purpose of setting including the planning commission at this time is, um, we would hope that some of this stuff gets corrected or explained or flushed out before it gets to the planning commission. But do you know what the schedule is? I mean, what's what's your understanding? They, I think they had originally set a timetable as to when they wanted to look at this. And I'm not sure that they, are sticking to that. So I'm not really sure when they're at this point bringing this up to, to the planning commission. They had asked for our comments uh, during the month of October, uh, but I'm not sure when they actually are gonna consider it. Well, yeah, and it wouldn't, wouldn't we like to know? I mean, can you ask them? <laughs> I mean, this is kind of, how can the planning commission consider it without these other reports? You know, the missing reports. They obviously can't make a final decision on anything without those missing reports. And we've, we've we noted that in the letter. And, you know, um, I had talked to Lisa when this first came out about some of this, and she said that her, that she, they had, a, they had, or I guess the MCC had always been explicitly told that comments were welcome up until the time of the meeting. So um, I know that they, asked you for preliminary or for comments, but I mean, there's probably a chance for you to provide comments again and again, because, uh, you know, we don't, they're not being very forthright about what's going on here. Well, you I'm may just, be right. We may have to say something else in the future. But. Well, yes, but you should also find out what the, what the schedule is. I mean, why not ask them that? Because this is kind of, has us all on like uh, this, uncertainty of how important is it to do something now when they haven't answered the questions that we've been asking in the last seven years. It's weird. Anyway, thank you. So, so Dolores, there's two parts to that. Mike Schaller, the planner, primary against for this letter. 
um, because he works with the applicant to get everything complete and addressed before it goes to the planning commission. Um, the planning commission is and the uh, coastal commission are copied on this because we do that on major projects to give them a heads up on our positions about concerns on projects. Um, Mike has indicated uh, back in early September that this would not be going to the planning commission um, at least through October. And uh, we had pointed out to him the biological report was blank back in July. We pointed it out to him back again in September. Both times he was going to follow up with mid-10 and nothing has come back to us. So clearly they're not ready to go to the planning commission yet. Uh, but um, letting, yeah. letting them know what we think the things they still need to work on has some merit. Yes, that's exactly it. Um, because they can tweak this project, add things, clarify it. And uh, we will hear about those comments um, before it goes to the Planning Commission. And Lisa Ketchum is absolutely correct. Comments to the Planning Commission can go up to the Planning Commission all the way up to the time of the meeting. Um, but if you want them to go out to all the commissioners and have them time to read it, it needs to be at least three days before the meeting. Okay. Um, one last thing there is though, um, Lisa had indicated that they were just going out for for um, soliciting for people to bid for the EIR. Uh, do you know if that has happened? Do you know if they've selected anybody? I don't know that they have. I have also heard that they have put out uh, a request for bids, but I haven't heard that anything has happened. So we can expect to see an EIR at some point. At some point, yes. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I don't see any other uh, public comment requests. So I will go around to each member of the council. We do have a motion to approve the letter on the floor. So this will be a discussion on uh, approving the letter or making modifications. Uh, start with Greg, please. Actually, you know, go ahead. No, I think you might be better to start with somebody else. Well, you are part of the team that wrote, wrote the letter. Well, but I'm not endorsing the letter uh, unless the majority of the council does, in which case I will be a team player and go along with it because some letter is better than no letter. But I do plan to write my own letter. And as you saw, if you looked at the draft that Gus pulled together with all the stuff that I had written, there are a lot of things more that I wanted to say. And unfortunately, due to the Brown Act, the, the council hasn't heard all the questions I raised and all the answers Dave gave me and, and all the debate that went on, including my request for a concluding paragraph the other day, uh, which asked them to stop the project until they solve these problems. But let me just mention a couple of things. I met with Cal Fire was it last week because I had concerns about firefighting water storage, the hydrant pressure, um, evacuation, um, and so forth. And what they told me was they haven't been paid the fee by mid pen housing, so they're not doing the analysis and they'll have nothing public to say. And as a result of them not having any specs, Montero Water and Sanitary District can't price whether they need a two or three million dollar sewer loop, uh, I mean uh, water loop, to up the pressure in that area. Okay, they can't price the firefighting water storage, et cetera. I also was concerned about the traffic and the fact that the traffic study uses an eight-year-old, at least eight-year-old standard. It's two generations out of date and uses a, an apartment complex that's no longer a usable term. The traffic stuff is likely full of holes. And somebody said, why don't you go look at Moonridge? They have a lot of cars parked down there off the street. The sheriff reported once 600 off-road cars parked. It's normally a few hundred. So I went down there at 11.15 a.m. on Wednesday. And sure enough, there were 250 cars parked on the road outside of the parking spaces in that complex. Now, the road is big enough to do that. It's extra wide. It can have parking on both sides of the street. Carlos Street isn't. So my combination of concern for what is probably a flawed analysis of traffic and so forth is that they're going to have a situation where people are going to try and park on Carlos Street. It's going to be a mess. <clears throat> and we need to have a bike lane and a sidewalk 
and it's a one-way street. And Caltrans told me one, I mean, Cal Fire told me one other thing. According to the documents they've read, and they've said this in a meeting with MidPen, they're not going to approve that project because the road is one way in the wrong direction. Okay, now this isn't in writing yet because again, they haven't been paid for it. So there's a whole bunch of stuff up in the air, including my email to county planning asking what was the audit and mitigation and restitution process they were going to follow for all the things that might go wrong. Traffic, storm drains, water supply. No answer for three weeks. So I'm just really, I, I, A, I don't trust the county. B, I think there's pressure behind this thing that, that people think they're doing good with this affordable housing when in fact they're harming the community. They're not solving the wage inequality that causes the fact that people can't afford to buy housing. The, the minimum wage thing that Harvey brought up might help with the farm workers. But the real problem is, you know, people want to make money with their businesses. They don't pay workers enough. And here we're supposed to give people a 9% investment tax credit to build a, uh, affordable housing that actually costs us money, as you will see when we analyze the impact on infrastructure. So I have a lot of problems. But as I said, depending on what the rest of you think, if you don't want a really long 10-page letter, then I'll go along with this one, but I really plan on writing another one and I'll ask you if you want to co-sign it. Thanks. Michelle? Yeah, I, I think Greg made a lot of really great points um, and I agree with all of them. Um, yeah, it's definitely the case that there's, you know, two parking spots per, per, per unit is not, is probably not gonna be sufficient see that at Moon Ridge, also see that near um, Pillar, Pillar Ridge, no, no sorry, uh, the, the mobile home um, uh, project in Moss Beach. I think that um, the letter is a, is a good letter. It's a pretty thorough letter, although it does seem to be missing a couple points. Um, I, I agree with some of the comments that have been made by the public that the paragraph on the fire station relocation doesn't belong here, and and I would be in support of an amendment to remove that. Um, you know, I, I appreciate the people that did all the work on this. I don't, I may have missed it, but I don't think I ever got the copy of the longer letter that Gus wrote. I don't believe that that was ever sent out. It was sent out. Although it published on the it was in a, It was published. Okay. I didn't see that in yes. relation to this on that. Okay. So yeah, I guess my bad, I didn't have a chance to, to read that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that we need to say something. This is a, a, a very good letter. It's, it's not a perfect letter. Um, I would like the paragraph from the fire station removed and um, I'd be in support of anything added to um, talk about the parking situation. Okay, Len? <laughs> Um, it seems to me that from everything I've heard up to this point, that it's clear that there isn't, even with respect to Mike Schaller's role in this to ultimately write a report to the Planning Commission, is not on, on the schedule. So I don't feel that there's a rush in one sense, but I do think moving ahead with a letter that's been drafted and embedded is a useful step. As I said before, I've been trying to work with the policy of complete streets and follow that in a lot of different places. So I think that'll make a con contribution, but I don't see it's valuable to argue as how it might fit into this. If I do the best job I can of writing that up and other people such as Gray do the best job on what they're writing and publish that relatively soon in the next week or two, we just have a repository of good things written about it. And then as they move forward with the project, it'll be quite possible to review those things and then consider where to go. So uh, I, I think we spent good time on this and we should make a good letter here. I have no problem with Greg saying he's going to write another letter. I assume he wouldn't say, I don't agree with this other one. He can vote for or against it. And if I bring out something you know, by myself, it'll still be there to look at. So I would like to see us bring this to a positive conclusion in that somewhat limited context. Thank you. Jill? Sorry, I have uh, technical difficulties with my iPad. Um, so, 
So I have a couple comments to make and I promise to keep it under three minutes, but I don't really want to be interrupted. So let me start. First of all, um, I support affordable housing projects and especially ones that are for teachers and school staff because I once was a teacher and I'm very aware that you cannot live on the pay of a teacher in the Bay Area and not on the coast side. I know many teachers who are struggling on the coast side and I've known many teachers who've lived in their cars. So um, this is a big issue for me, uh, dear to my heart and quite a tragedy and not only teachers, but farm workers. So I, I'm in favor of, uh, of affordable housing on the coast. Secondly, last week, Governor Newsom signed 41 housing bills passed by the California legislature. And one of them, uh, I think it's uh, 2295, will allow uh, teaching and staff housing to be built on any property owned by a school district without requiring a rezoning change request. And it also loosens federal and state requirements um, for construction on school property. This subverts the power of cities and counties and will get these affordable housing projects um, built in the most expedient manner possible. Um, this Midpen Cypress Point project, I see it now with 71 units and, and I understand all the problems and, I, and I, I agree with them. I'm not arguing them, but I wonder if if this project is not approved and challenged and denied, why would they not just sell it to the school district and then the school district could build 330 units there? So I think uh, we need to look into that as well. I mean, that is a possibility. The school district, excuse me, I'm still talking. School district is evaluating all their properties right now. And they pulled the, the Frisbee golf course from GCSD because they're looking into building there for teachers and staff affordable housing. So I think that we should look ahead to these changes. And um, that's all I have to say. Thank you very much for all your work on this letter, everyone. It's very detailed and has a lot of important issues. Dan. Yes. Um, so I want to say that I agree with uh, all the concerns brought up by uh, JQ, Dolores, and Greg. <clears throat> um, I think the big issue is really... Um, safety versus the number of units at this uh, proposed location. Um, earlier, we talked about road safety um, to quite a degree. Um, and, um, you know, it's clear that the more units that are proposed at this uh, uh, location, um, the less safe this intersection, Highway 1 and, and Carlos, uh, will be uh, in addition to the, some of the other uh, adjoining streets. Um, I don't think there's really any denying that. I think everybody knows that. The, the more units they put in there, the more uh, interaction with cars and the, the more chance of, of uh, um, you know, accidents, et cetera. Um, I believe that we should be requesting uh, in this letter, I believe that we should be requesting to reduce um, the number of units, um, you know, uh, considering the safety impact and, and uh, in addition to the infrastructure uh, deficiencies for this project. So um, I would certainly support um, an amendment um, towards the reduction of the uh, 
number of units for this project. And um, I don't want to take, uh, yeah, I, I got a feeling this conversation can go a little longer. So I'm going to stop now and, and uh, re hopefully I can have another minute to add later. Thank you. Okay, Dave. Yeah. Um, so a couple of comments on previous comments. I mean, I wrote the letter in, in part, I was the final editor on it. So I obviously don't have too many complaints about the letter. I'll say I added stuff like some of the analysis stuff that I don't personally agree with because there was enough community and council input that they wanted it. Uh, similarly on some of the infrastructure comments. So this is by no means my letter. Um, it was. Um, I'm continue to say I am for this project. I am strongly for it. I am continue to be worried and have been worried since the very beginning about the access to this project and the access to Highway One, both directions. Um, that is a huge stumbling block. Um, and I made that pretty clear in the letter and my previous comments. Um, and I'll comment on some of Greg's comments. Um, I have no idea what the fire comments about one way were all about. As far as I know, there's no one way access anywhere in the project, although I certainly could have missed it. Um, they, this is not the building permit stage and therefore there is no official plan review. Um, the, the agency is such as water and, and fire charge for plan reviews. I've been through that with um, the history museum project that I'm project manager on. Um, so they are not required to comment on a project before the building permit stage. Um, they have, but they are still given the opportunity to, if they choose not to, that's certainly their choice. Um, but it's a, an opportunity to raise any major issues that they see. Typically, if they don't choose to comment, it means they did not see any insurmountable issues, just issues that can be addressed during the building permit stage. But that's not a given. Um, so... Um, yeah, I, I, I think we have a letter which is a fair amount of compromises, but I think addresses a number of major issues. It's not as in some, some um, and that's why people should write their own, but I think it does hit all the major issues that have ever been raised about this project that were not already addressed. So uh, that's pretty much all I've got to say. Okay, I would like to go ahead and move to a vote unless there are other uh, major issues or amendments that people want to propose. Uh, no, we've, we've closed. Uh, we've closed. I would like to propose that we remove the paragraph um, that begins with the upcoming renovation of the Moss Beach Fire Station. Okay. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Okay, Dan, could you, or is there a discussion on that? Dan, could you go ahead and call the roll on the um, uh, motion to um, provide an amendment that would remove the paragraph about the fire station? Okay, Claire? No. Greg? Greg? I'm going to abstain. Um, Michelle? Yes. Okay. Uh, Len? You're on mute, Len. Yes. Um... Dave? I'll vote no to keep it in. Jill? Yes. And I say yes. So we have uh, four yeses, <clears throat> uh, two noes, 
and an abstention. Okay, so, so passes. that we will remove that paragraph. Any other comments or amendments? So we're ready to vote on the letter as a whole. So I, I have, uh, <clears throat> you know, I got throw it out as a straw vote. Okay. Does, does anybody else in the council have concern with uh, lowering the number of units? I, I, think I don't again. think it's doable. The LCP amendment already passed. That That's pretty much over and done with. <laughs> Uh, irregardless, I'm talking from your heart and understanding the number of uh, automobile uh, interactions with Carlos and Highway 1. Dan, would you and like to make an amendment to it? Excuse me, Claire, you, you just interrupted me. I know because I was hoping you could make I'm, an amendment. I'm asking, no, I'm not going to be rushed into making an amendment. This is part of the discussion. Uh, I'm asking, um, you know, the council, um, you know, from the heart, is, is anybody else concerned with the, uh, you know, the, the safety implications of having so many more cars going in and out of Carlos at Highway One, you know, with this, with this, uh, you know, this, this, this <clears throat> blind curve. Well, I do. Okay. The letter pretty much states that. Do we have a concern what? on the project impact on traffic and safety? Not, but yeah, but not specifically regarding the number of units. Obviously, the number, if the number, if, if, the, if the project was reduced with number of units, it would actually make a difference. Uh. I'm not not rushing you, Dan, but how would you like to address this? I, I hear you expressing an opinion, but, but we're talking about finalizing the letter. So how would you like to address your concern? Um, I, I'd like to address that we add into the letter um, that the uh, project should be reduced in size, uh, uh, should be reduced the number of units should be reduced um, in order to make the area uh, safer with the known. <clears throat> okay, obviously, I <laughs> haven't really worked this all the way out, but uh, um, the area should be reduced in the, the uh, project should be reduced in size um, to make the highway at Carlos and uh, Highway One safer. Okay, is there a second to that? I'll second. Okay, Dan, could you go ahead and call the roll on it? Well, we need specific. Is there any more discussion? Like, where do you want to put that in the letter? Let's see if it's approved and then we'll work on the wording if it is. Just want to be clear. I don't no, feel like no I know enough to vote. What so yeah. do you need to know, yeah. Can I have it, Dan, to make it clear and you can tell me whether I've captured what you want? Yeah, go ahead. The amendment would be to add a new paragraph to the letter that the council requests that the number of units in the project be reduced to improve the, to reduce the impact on traffic and increase the safety of the highway access for the project. Does that sound like what you wanted to say, Dan? Yes, thank you, Dave. Okay. So that's the amendment. We will put it someplace in the letter if it's approved. Is there a second to the amendment? I'll second no. that. Oh, oh, shoot. Oh, I Jill already did. did. Jill, Jill already, already seconded it. Yeah, okay. I just redid the wording. Any further discussion on that? 
Could you call the roll on it, please? Uh, somebody, I heard a voice. Uh, yeah, it's me. I, I just, I guess I, I'm wondering, that's a very specific request. I guess nowhere else in the ledger do we specific, we say all the problems with the project, but we don't specifically say we want, what we want them to do. So I, I think the placement of this is important because like if it goes at the end, that's kind of concluding that, okay, we, we like the project, but we want the number of units to be reduced. Um, like, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm not fully confident on what we're asking for here. And if that, if that paragraph is added, it, it does seem to make very clear what we're asking for. Or I mean, could you specify whether you want votes or for each person to speak to their thoughts about the... I would... Yeah, I, I, this Len, is my Len, hold on. We we're vote. having a discussion. Please, Len, don't shut down the discussion. No, I wasn't. Please, please don't do that either. Um, what did you say, Lynn? I didn't even hear you. But my question was, I thought we were moving toward a vote. Michelle began yeah, to discuss I had a comment things, so before it we seems vote. appropriate to have the whole council go around and speak to it. Yeah. yeah I, my, I, I guess I have a little bit of a question for the rest, rest of the council. Is that <clears> the conclusion? Is that what we want out of this? <laughs> That's... It depends on what we vote for. Well, is that what each individual wants? I, I would like to go around. I would like to hear what everyone wants out of this letter. Out of the letter or out of this amendment? Out of the letter as a whole, because I think putting this, this comment in the letter is a pretty clear indication of what we want. We want a reduced number of units. So, Michelle, we had a long discussion at the previous two meetings about what the letter was intended to be. Um, do we really need to rehash that? I think so. I think it would be helpful, but everyone, you can pass if you don't want to talk about it. I, I think what we had tried to say is that we're trying to respond to the application, to what's in it, to, to uh, give, to point out areas where they need to put more consideration into the application. And um, not to redo all their work for them, but to point out what, what work they still need to do. Um, so, I, Claire, I personally, I, what? I, I thought we were going to go around, which we would lead and probably be the last person, and each person can speak to the amendment. Len, Len, you're interrupting Claire. She's speaking. Well, Claire, so I'm not sure where Claire's going, but go ahead, Claire. Okay, I I go. 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 all right. Okay, look, I'm going to go right across the top of the screen here on my computer, and or anybody can say whatever they want to say about Dan's amendment or about the letter as a whole, which I think we already said something about it for the last two meetings. But okay, so the next person across the top of my screen is Lynn. I'm not averse to asking for a lower count of units, but in this framework, I'm not. I would rather leave it where it's in the letter now. Okay. The next person across the top of my screen is Dave. I have nothing to say. The next person is Greg. I'm okay with putting this in, but I understand Michelle's point. Um, the draft of the letter I wanted to see had a lot more specificity in a lot of other places, and this sort of inconsistent to do this. But yes, I agree with the nature of the amendment. Next person is Jill. I I echo Greg. I have the same comments. Okay, that's everybody. I think. Um, I don't my, get my concerned. my opinion is that, that uh, Claire, do, do I what you didn't what? call on me? Oh, I thought you'd already expressed yourself. Okay, go ahead, Dan. Okay, well, I'll be very short. <clears throat> um, you know, there's, there's just absolutely no denying that <sighs> the greater the number of units at this location. Uh, the greater amount of travel, uh, cars 
from Carlos going into Highway One. There's just there's just no denying. So um, the, based on that, there's no denying the more cars going out there, um, the greater the safety hazard will be. Um, I'll just I guess I should stop there. Okay. Okay, I think I'm going to attempt to say what I wanted to say, which is that I think that this is a, a issue that's already been settled by the CDP and that uh, it has a specificity to it that the rest of the letter doesn't have, and I'm, I'm not in agreement with it. Can I, can I just follow up that, you know, this is coming from the community, oh. you know, Forget about forget about the state. Forget about all the other stuff. This is from the community, <clears throat> and uh, I don't think anybody can really, you know, um, deny what I'm saying. So, um, if you want to cover yourself by the state, you know, or, or whatever, you know, the <clears throat> um. Anyway, uh, I'll stop. You might want to um, stop there. That seemed a little yeah. insulting, but um, we can. If everybody's, I, I didn't mean. I didn't mean to insult anybody. I didn't mean to insult okay, anybody. Good. But, but, um, you know, it's it obviously clear in my mind that uh, you know the more cars going in and out of Carlos at Highway One, the greater the safety uh, hazard will be. Period. There's just no denying that. However, that's not what you're asking. But we, we do have your amendment on the floor. Well, I'm, ask, I'm asking you to reduce the number. Right. Reduce the number. That's what it is. Of course. Can I ask that what Dave said be typed as the amendment be typed into the chat, if you have it? That would be Sorry, good. I'm having a hard time de deciding on this. Let me bring up the live uh, caption and see if I can find it in there. I mean, my my concern is that the the number of units. Yes, it would be great if it were decreased. Um, I mean, it impacts both the the traffic, the parking, the water and sewer, the evacuation. Um, you know, fewer units would would be an improvement over the proposed project for a lot of reasons, and so I just I can't remember if we specifically said due to traffic and safety issues or if we kept it more broad but my preference would be if we do add this amendment um, to keep it more broad does anyone else remember if that was specifically <laughs> mentioned are you currently trying to type it into the chat dave yes i am thank you Claire, I would just like to say one thing, and that is that there's a whole environmental justice aspect to this project. They want to put low-income people in a out-of-the-way area. It, you know, like JQ said, there's it's 14 miles to a major grocery store, medical doctor's appointments, all of that. I mean, and to put 142 parking spaces means that there's probably going to be at least 200 trips in and out of there per day if they all work. And um, I just, first of all, I looked up on the internet and I mean, on the tax records and the... Um, the state teachers association still owns it. That's so no wonder, no wonder they I haven't know. gone ahead and paid for any of the permits or anything. It's okay. Please, please. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to so deliver. They have paid for the permit process, but, but not Cal Fire. I think that's the it's it's not at that stage. <laughs> mirrors, lights. You know, they're doing it with mirrors. I think. Anyway, you, I just wanted to put that out there. They don't even own the property yet. That, that, that's not a surprise. Almost there.
Okay. So it's in Yeah, my opinion is if we are going to add this, I would be in support of something that's more general and uh, either cites the multiple issues that this would benefit as I listed or alternatively that's just specifically tied to the, the traffic and safety section. But Mm -hmm. I guess when we vote, we can say why we voted that way, and then it's on the record there. Try not to shut down the discussion, Len. Uh, just making comments, Dan. You don't need to talk back. Uh, just for the record, there's a typo in what Dave put in here. At least I don't understand it. So. Uh, I just fixed it. Okay. Instead of read, it was reduce. It's still not perfect. No, of course it's not perfect, but it's no, none of this is perfect. Dad and Dan and <laughs> No, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. Council requests uh, the number of units in the project be reduced to improve the to reduce the impact on traffic okay. and increase the safety. Okay, that's what traffic. happens when you try and edit on the fly. Let me work. Yep, on it. I get it. This is live transcript, and then I'm editing the live transcript. Yeah. Does anybody else have a comment on 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 the language? Um, yeah, I think it. I mean, we could we could wordsmith it, but I think yeah, I don't know. Do that. There, I, I just put another draft in. <laughs> no, that doesn't capture what Dan was saying. I like it better though. So, so Dan's amendment is on the table. Can we vote on that? If somebody wants to have a different amendment, we'll do that next. I'd love well, Dan's to amendment that. is very vague. Uh, um, Michelle is the Dan one who wants agree. to have this be perfect. I know. We can vote I know. On it. No, I, I'm the one that's pushing this, but I, I would just ask if, does Dan agree with Greg's? Does Dan agree with Greg? Or with, with Greg's, the, the amendment as written in the chat? That Greg. Well, the, there's only one amendment on the on the table. But there was it wasn't oh, specific. Oh, oh, we're, we're having a discussion. We're working it out. We're working it out. Um, it's a, it's a broad just, topic that is and, being amended that we reduce the number of units. Th that that's the proposal, right? It wasn't that it appears exactly as Dan r said and Greg and um, Dave typed up. So my question is for Dan: Do you? Agree, would you accept the proposed copy that Greg wrote in the chat? Yes. In, in, in which case you are withdrawing your amendment, is that correct? No. We, uh, it's a totally different This is amendment. my amendment. It's a totally this is different my amendment. thing, Dan. So, Why is it all different? Right, I remove my amendment, I, remove, I withdraw my amendment, and I have a new amendment um, to um, adopt Greg's language. Read okay. it out so that it's not just in chat. The council requests <laughs> that as a partial mitigation of the several potential concerns raised, that the number of units in the project be reduced. That's your new I amendment. I second that. Okay. Do we want to discuss this? Michelle, Michelle seconds that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm, I'm just taking notes here. Okay. What discussion do people want to have about this? None. In which case, Dan, could you please call the roll on the amendment? Okay, Jill? Yes. I'm yes. Um, Michelle? Yes. Greg? Yes. Claire? No. Len? Abstain. Dave? 
No. Sorry? No. I, no. Okay. Got it. All right. So we have one, two, three, four yeses. We have one, two no's. <clears throat> and we have one abstinence. So the uh, amendment passes. Thank you. Okay. So the next question is as editor, where in the document does it go? Either Michelle or Dan, please. I think it should belong um, before the, the paragraph that states if the project does proceed or either right before or right after that paragraph. It's fine with me. You want it before or after? I think after. Unless someone else feels strongly. Okay, John. Vote. Are we ready to vote on the letter or is there further amendments that need to be made? Sounds like we're ready to vote on the letter. As we approve the letter as amended. Do you need a second? A second. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, so, so Dave, um, Moved and uh, who said I'm sorry? I did. Okay, Michelle. Michelle, thank you. All right. Um, no discussion uh, from the community or anybody else? We've already discussed quite a bit. So if you could call the roll. Hey, Dave, you, you know I like to talk and I, I like to hear the community. Can okay, so Claire. Call? Yes. Greg? Yes. Jill? Yes. Dave? Yes. Len? Yes. Michelle? Yes. And I'm yes, so that uh, it's approved unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. The next item is the fall newsletter, and I'll turn that over to Michelle. Yes. Um, so we've, over the past couple of years, developed a pretty good cadence of newsletters. Um, it looks like doing it three times a year makes sense. I know we call it the quarterly newsletter, but the holidays get really busy. <clears throat> so the last year and a half or so, we've done a spring, a summer, and a fall newsletter. And um, we sent the fall newsletter out in the beginning of August. Um, so I'd like to do the, I'm sorry, we sent the summer let, newsletter out in the beginning of August. But I'd like to do the fall newsletter in November um, before things get busy with the holidays. Um, I was looking back at the items um, that have come up on the council since then. Um, and have a few ideas to throw out. We we don't have to do all of these, um, but Cypress Point has been probably the biggest thing that we've worked on. So I would think we'd want a topic on that. And we have the El Granada sidewalks and the Montero stop signs. We have the Quarry Park master plan, um, the CARES project and that expansion to the mid coast, um, the Highway One road roadway rehab project, we had the MRSD presentation today, and then we had this Seal Cove kiosk. Um, those are things that are new since um, the, the last newsletter. And of course, there's been project progress on some of the other issues, but I don't like wildfire and things like that have moved forward slightly, but I don't think there are any other major topics that we've addressed. However, you know, if anyone wants to write about something, it's always an option, um, as long as it's something that the council has um, talked about. So uh, I, you could, know, could I nominate they, something, Michelle? Sure. Yeah. Um, while it wasn't really our initiative, I think the CARES program that Half Moon Bay initiated using mental health workers instead of armed sheriffs that would be worth yeah, it. Yeah, I, I see that. I, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. you want to vote? 
Are you want to write about that? So, okay, yeah. Do you want to write about that? Yeah, Eric? I'll be glad to do it. Yeah, sure. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I think that's a, a really important thing that should be included. Um, I wanted, we, we need um, volunteers to write each uh, letter or each, each article. We also need um, someone to be the editor and someone to be kind of like the technical person. Um, and considering that this will be my last newsletter on the council, um, and I've been doing the, the technical um, setup most of the time, um, I definitely need someone else to take that over. Um, what that involves is basically just kind of rem uh, reminding everyone when the, their articles are due, um, sending out, setting it up in MailChimp, and then sending it off to the um, county for translation services into Spanish, and then actually sending the email newsletter out. So I need someone to volunteer for that, to work with me, and to have me train. That has to be someone who's going to be on the council um, next term. Uh, and I then I also, we also... I would nominate Gus, it. but I have a hunch, he, since he's not on the council yet, I might have to do it. If you will document it, I will do it, and then I'll try and rope Gus in next year. Yeah, I want to do it with, with you know, if you want to volunteer for that position, that would be great. I can I train you. I don't think you. I have a choice. I, I don't yeah. see any other volunteer. Okay. So that's you. But I do, but it, it would be best to have a second person as the editor. And a couple of people in, on the council have done that. Greg, Dave. Um, I don't think anyone else has done the editor position. Jill do it? Um, oh, yeah. Jill did it, of course. That's right. Um, it doesn't, so since there is some expert, expertise in that role, um, it doesn't necessarily need to be someone who's going to continue on. Do we have a volunteer for editor? Dave, you did it last time. Len? Bill? Being the editor just involves um, reading the articles and making sure that they are not biased and um, have correct you grammar and spelling. you say the articles will be due? Yeah, so um, working backward from the timeline, I want this to be sent out no later than November 15th, which is the week before Thanksgiving. Um, so we need at least a week from, for translation, and I like to build in an extra, a little bit of extra time in case people don't get their letters in on time. So I was thinking having letters due on or around um, Halloween time, you know, somewhere around the 30th or 31st. Um, having the editor do the editing that week and um, finalizing editing by about November 3rd or 4th and then aiming to send the newsletter out either the <clears throat> around the 9th or um, building in the extra timeline no later than the 15th. Michelle, G Gus has his hand up if he wants to. Yes, Gus. Uh, hi. Um, could I, like, could I do, uh, this is, half addressed to Greg, like, can I do all that? Like, like long run, can I do the editing stuff and you do the technical stuff? Like the second I hear technical, like I promise you don't want me touching anything technical. Yeah, I, will, yeah, I, will, sure, I will only screw it up. But the edit, I feel like the editing is more of the heavy lift and I'm happy to do that. And I'm, I'm happy to do it with like starting whenever. I just don't know if it's appropriate for me to be involved in it before I'm formally seated on the council. But if it's, if it's something I can be involved in without causing trouble, I'm happy to get started whenever. It would be fine, for my opinion. Okay. Claire, I assume would agree. Yeah. Yes, and I had conversation. I, I, you know, I had conversations with county council. Um, we didn't want guest writers, um, but I think the editing that would be great if you could help out, um, guest. I think there's no problem with having you do that. So okay, so let's plan on that. Um, we so now we just need volunteers to write the articles. Does I'll someone do the Corey Park do master plan. Okay, great. I'll do. I'll do state route one. Okay, wonderful. Who's going to do Cypress Point? That's a big one. What What are we expecting? <laughs> I think it's just summarizing the fact that we sent a letter 
maybe some highlights from that um, progress on the project in general. All right. Next steps. Great. We also emphasize there may be other letters that have gone in by then, and we really want to see a flow of letters coming so we can encourage that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And then the last thing I had, um, well, the I know right during this time, we're going to be having those public meetings on the El Granada sidewalks and the Montero stop sign. So it would be two, we'll send out a separate email just encouraging people to attend those meetings. Um, we could have a summary of those meetings. Yeah, I'll write that up. We got it in. Okay, so that one's going to be the one that's going to have the tightest timeline um, because it, within a day or two after those meetings, we'll want to have that written up. Yeah, just make sure you send out a list of who who's supposed to do what so that we all stay awake. I will. Okay, so 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 now we have Cypress Point is Dave. Um, El Granada Sidewalks and Montero Stop Signs would be Greg. Quarry Park Master Plan, Len, CARES Project, Greg. Um, State Route 1, road, Roadway Rehab Project, Jill. And then Guess as the editor and Greg as the technical person, and I'll be training you on that. And what are we doing with our mailing list? That's yeah. my fail to, failure to follow through. And uh, Michelle has reminded me multiple times. You've reminded me multiple times. I will make another major effort to get it done. Um, Gus, uh, could I request that you send a mail to the uh, Midcoast Community Council at gmail.com alias giving the email address you'd like us to use for the sending you editor submissions? Okay. Perfect. All right. So you okay. set, set that. Okay. All set. Thank you. Okay. We need to return to the minutes for September 14th. Dave, what was your concern about that? Yeah, it's pretty short. Hold on. Okay. So this is the September 28th minutes. Um, there is um, an error um, in the Board of Supervisors report. It says, Claire Tutat and Dave Olson are encouraging an up-to-date report, blah, blah, blah. And it should just say, Claire said, that Claire encouraged an up-to-date report. Um, and then I made the follow-on comment that we are up-to-date through FY 2020. And I can mail this to you, Len. You don't have to capture it all now. Good. Um, That's what I'm expecting. And uh, at the end of 4B strike, Dave asked if further comments sent to him. There was a discussion about that, but um, I didn't say it. And we ended up dropping it. That's it. So okay. I would move to approve the uh, September 28th minutes as amended. Oh, wait a minute. The September 28th minute, minutes uh, were the subject of an email I wrote Len late today. I found half a dozen typos and uh, I had some questions of fact. Let's just bring it back next time. And we're going to keep falling further and further behind if we do that. If they're just typos, can you read them off, Greg? Yeah, let's um, bring it back next time. Or either that or I can copy you on the email and then you guys can clean it up. Well, we, have, we have a bigger problem too. We have the minutes from tonight, the minutes for the November meeting and probably the minutes from the December meeting that all need to be taken care of this year in addition to the ones that are still pending. Which is and what I would... seems like has been a problem. Is, does anyone have a solution to that? Can I ask that we finish this first? Part that, that issue is why I would like to get these minutes closed out tonight if we can. And to do that, they have to be read into the record, Greg. So if you could okay, just well, read them from your email. All right, all right I'll read them. Right. There's wording that says, addressing the eucalyptus forest is larger that a parks issue, it should be van. There's Jill supports education, but OS not sure about this approach. That should be <coughs> is not sure about this approach. There's Greg thinks the QR code use would be a good approach. Should be Greg thinks the QR code on a sign would be a good approach. 
And then there's Claire introduced two letters. I believe she only introduced one letter, but as noted later on in the discussion, we raised the issue of the bigger letter. There's 75 of the units will be made specifically available for people. <laughs> there are only 71 units, so I think what was said was 75% of the units yeah. will be made specifically available for people. Similarly, 49 units will be allocated for farm workers. I believe that was 49%. And then Joaquin said Greg would could work with Greg to identify a Hispanic candidate. I hope... Uh, and what I recall is that Joaquin said he can work with Greg to identify another candidate. I don't believe Hispanic is, I mean, it's logical inference, but I don't believe it was stated that way, or, and it certainly wasn't promised that way. Okay. He said from Pillar Ridge. Oh. Not everybody there is Hispanic. Yeah, by a long shot. Okay, so did anybody else have amendments to the minutes? Okay, so I again make the motion to approve the September 28th minutes as amended by both Greg and myself. I, I second in desperation. Thank you. If there is no discussion, could you please call the roll, Dan? Yes. <clears throat> um, okay, Dave, Dave yes. moved and... <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes, I moved. Greg seconded. Greg seconded. Sorry. Okay, Claire? Yes. Greg? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Dave? Dave? Sorry. Yes. Mute. I am not on mute. <laughs> I said yes. I, I didn't, we we I didn't couldn't hear, hear you the first time. Got a yep, uh, yep. bandwidth problem or something. Okay, Jill? Yes. Len? Yes. And I'm yes, so it passes 7 0. <clears throat> okay, are we going to deal with, with what's going to happen for the rest of the year with the minutes, or are we just going to let it go? So this was for the 28th, right? Yes. So we, what do you want to do on the 14th? Decide it wasn't there soon enough and defer it? <clears throat> uh, that was the 24th that you just sent out this morning, this evening, wasn't it? The 14th had gone out earlier. It was posted yesterday. <clears throat> yeah, we, we, we approved that. Yeah, we did. Okay, that was, that was approved as is? Yes. Gotcha. Missed that. <clears throat> okay. Oh, then I, as I said, the, the uh, one for the uh, 24th needed further discussion. I was going to get in touch with you, Claire. Okay, since it just came out, we can we can discuss that before the next meeting. Correct. Yeah. Uh, so basically, I'm, I'm caught up, if you will, and I, I, Jill has provided certain support, so I'm not concerned about the next three meetings. It, okay, so right. good to know. I want to ask, so because you said they were late and they needed work, I did not post them. Is that the appropriate action? You mean for the 24th? Yeah, yes, the August 24th ones. No, I would we'll, post we'll have them. it next time. <clears throat> <clears throat> I, I would support posting them because they're virtually complete and they can the information people can respond to, but I'll go either way. It's at least it's basically it can't complete. Posted, it can't be posted for this meeting because no, it's no. Well, done earlier. No, they can be posted. They just were not voted on. So that's fine. Whatever. But okay. I, I do hope that we're not going to be one more, more than one meeting behind through the rest of the year. Is that? I think that's what Claire was really asking. And do you think that's going to be the case, Len? I, I was saying yes. Thank you. Okay. And as far as I'm concerned, we're not voting on the August minutes tonight. Correct. So we can move on to council activity, mm. which I know there is some. At least that's what I've heard. 
There isn't any? Oh, Greg's got his hand up, okay. We already covered the uh, Department of Public Works uh, matter, so I won't repeat that. Uh, I do wanna mention that I'm trying to pursue um, a memorial bench for Harold Herman. Been in touch with Nick Calderon, and he's going to put me in touch with the Parks Foundation. I don't know what's involved yet. Uh, I am aware there's a backlog of requests so I don't know where we'll be able to get the bench. I know that the family was hoping mm -hmm. to throw a point bluff, but I'll pursue that and I'll let everybody know. And then one more thing, I just tripped over today. I was at Quarry Park and I ran into the crew that was maintaining the pump track. They have to send a crew out every week for about a man day of work. It's two people for about four hours to do soil stability stuff. And I'll skip the details. Um, but there's an ongoing cost to maintaining the pump track that I didn't really appreciate. Um, and so this overlaps with the comments Sid has made that we really need that Mid Coast Parks Development Fund uh, and the, the fees to be indexed to inflation. And we need to collect the money we should have collected because we're going to need it to maintain the pump track, among other things. Parks is going to need some money. So I, I just would like to see us... Greg, those going. fees are not allowed to be used for that purpose. They're for capital... Purposes. Oh, okay, there you go. Thank you. <clears throat> Glenn? Um, I've been in conversation with RCD. We have the new uh, forest health and uh, wildfire person on board. So there'll be a meeting with him for people who've been active in wildfire, both in AMCC and others next week. And we can report on it after that. And, and I, th I think he will be at our November meeting. I would also point out just for information, both Michelle who was uh, on RCD's uh, planning group for the, uh, the document, which I believe is now finished, uh, will be off the council, as will I have been a representative to the fire safe council. And it's not completely clear what that's doing or where it's at, but uh, both of those openings and they, we've also constituted an ad hoc uh, fire wildfire committee so should I think give consideration as to how you fill that okay good point okay um future agendas we have a, a request have one beat council activity to report sorry the <laughs> Amended letter for Cypress Point is posted on the website. So that's over and done with. And and the August 14th minutes are now posted as well. That's it. Okay. Future agendas include an item on artificial turf next meeting. Uh, we will probably try to set something up about Rena. Other other ideas, Michelle? Yeah, I'd like to bring back the issue of airport lead um, before my time on the council ends. Um, we didn't really get anything that we asked for from the county. And I know some, you know, some changes have happened in terms of um, the availability of fuel, but I, I do think that there's still some testing that needs to be done. Um, so I want to put that on, on either the next um, agenda or the November agenda okay anybody else uh, can we get the report out of monowitz does that go on the agenda or do we write them a letter asking for a report that's already been done I, I think i think that i we need to work with lena on that yeah i'm i'm happy to follow up with him more and assist the count the council if they want someone to come speak at mcc or just get at the board whatever is we the would love will to get the anything council. you can get we've been trying to do this for a year and a half and have had no results whatsoever so anything would be a, an improvement right so, so i also want to mention in that context i personally don't think this is an issue but sid keeps requesting that the percentage developer fee be increased not and and um i don't think that's a concern but if the rest of the council thinks it's a concern 
Um, and remember, this is a percentage fee. So even though the percentage has increased significantly over the years, uh, then maybe we should put that on the agenda item as well. I agree. Dave, you broke up a little bit. Right. No, I, I, I agree with hear. Dave. We should put that on the, the matter as well. I, I don't think it should go on the agenda, but it's been discussed enough. I want to make sure the council just makes an explicit decision one way or the other. Yeah, I agree with uh, Greg and Dave. Put it on the agenda. We can't now, Dave, put it on the Dave, agenda when we have no content. Yeah, and no Dave does content. not want it on us. the agenda. <laughs> don't, don't bring my name into it. I'm raising the question. I, I think before we put it on the agenda, we have to have some research, as, as Claire's implying, so that we know what, what it is we're putting on the agenda. Right? Yeah, we I'm just sorry, need Dave, to get you, some you information. Up. I didn't... Nope, nobody is giving just... us information. Nobody is talking to us. It's very hard to have an agenda item about something we know nothing about that nobody tells us anything about. Dave, uh, I'm sorry. You, you were breaking up. I didn't fully understand what you said. I don't even understand what the what we're proposing okay. or not proposing. I, I am raising the issue for okay. the council and for Sid that yes. Sid keeps asking for an increase in the fee percentage. Okay. Of of what? For the Mid Coast Parks Fund developer fee. Okay. And I pointed out that while the percentage has not increased, because it is a percentage, the actual amount has increased every year due to inflation and cost of living. Okay. So I just wanted an explicit decision from council over the item to be, rather than having it come up at the meeting. Yeah, you broke up just that last paragraph. Rather than up. have it come up at the meeting. I think we're trying to decide things that can't be decided. I think, Lena, you 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 notice how little information we're, we've been able to get from anybody. And I'm hoping that, that you can help us further get something so that we can have an agenda item. Absolutely. And I, I touched base with them the day after uh, your last meeting and then touched base a week after that. And I could have touched base this week, but I have two big projects coming through next week. So I'll just do that on Wednesday of next week, too. Well, I've been touching base with them for a year and a half. So good luck. Yeah, maybe I'll have Dawn do it then. Okay. Okay. Are we ready to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. To call the roll, please, Dan. I'm just writing this down here. Greg second. Okay, Claire? Yes. Greg? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Jill? Yes. Dave? Yes. Um, yes, and Len? Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> done, done. Motion passes. Bye, all. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Recording stopped. Good night.